crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Gaurav um, and I'm part of the Octo team in CoinDCX. And uh, today I'll just, uh, my, my job is to give you a quick introduction about uh, how we are approaching solving the decentralized uh, finance problem uh, with our Octo app. Um, I, you know, it's just me talking to the screen, so I, I'll keep it short and try not to make it too boring. Uh, uh, so yeah, let me just jump into it. Uh, so, you know, before I actually start talking about Octo, it's it's really good to uh, get a view of uh, how we think decentralized finances. You know, nobody has written the textbook yet. So there's no standard definition of decentralized finance. But, you know, just to understand uh, what we think about decentralized finance, uh, you know, there's a very interesting uh, uh, quote somebody gave to me recently. You know, they said that uh, if you remember the, the second law of thermodynamics, it basically says that the entropy in the system always keeps on increasing, right? And I think if you keep that in mind and you look at finance over the last 100 years or so, that's really what's been happening. This decentralization has been happening throughout the last uh, few hundred years. You know, uh, if you look about uh, look at it, uh, compared to 100 years ago to now, more people have access to banking systems, more people have access to uh, stocks, trading, uh, so it's not only the large banks, but more and more smaller traders, uh, you know, s small businesses, they have access to these financial systems. Uh, and this latest wave of decentralization, you know, which blockchain is bringing is just an extension of that. Uh, that that's at least the way we look at it. Um, and uh, if you think about decentralization, right, it's I think you can kind of break it up in really three parts. There's decentralization or, or you know, democratization of, of the supply side. Uh, you know, which is the people who are participating in it. They are de decentralization of kind of the, the demand side uh, in terms of how I'm holding my uh, assets, uh, you know, where I'm keeping them. And then there's decentralization of, uh, of the actual transactions. So let me talk about the three parts, right? So if you look at the supply side er earlier, only your bank could offer you interest or only your bank or, you know, an investment bank could offer you um, uh, some of these, uh, uh, you know, products or, you know, structured products or some of the complex products that you can uh, trade. But now, you know, with DeFi, honestly, anybody who can write code can just build a quick product. They can build upon uh, a previous product. You know, they can combine multiple products together, which we call composability. So it's really, really enabled many, many more people to create innovative products. And that, I think, you know, by itself is going to just... Uh, 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 bring about great innovation in, in the creating these financial products. If you look at the participants, uh, right, uh, um, uh, the, the the people who can access these products, um, you know, and this has been a UN directive. They want to bring in inclusion into the financial system. They want to bring in more people into the uh, financial system. That's, that's been a goal for the United Nations since 2015. And I think this truly helps towards that goal where anybody with just a mobile phone can now start, you know, interacting with these uh, new products that have been created. Uh, can you trade, can, uh, uh, you know, lend, earn some interest, and maybe even buy some more complex products. So it, it's bringing in uh, democratization of both sides. And the last part is, and I think this is also very important, where because there is now no central clearing authority or matching engine, uh, you know, the transactions are really cheap they're fast they're almost instant uh which you know simple things and, and there's a much uh, uh talked about example of you know sending money from one country to another which would earlier take days and you know maybe months uh, uh a few decades back now can does happens in seconds so you know that's the kind of speed that decentralized finance also bring you on the transaction so supply side the uh, demand side and the transaction side um but having said that right it's it's not perfect yet there there's just uh, still a lot of challenges in there. I think a lot of power exists in this ecosystem, uh, but uh, this, uh, not everybody has been able to access the power. So what are the key problems that uh, that currently this ecosystem faces? Uh, and if you ask me to summarize it in one line, I would just say this, this uh, DeFi currently faces a problem of usability. Like it is incredibly difficult to access and use this ecosystem. Um, and let me try and you know add some more color to this to this statement. Uh, 
uh, the number of chains, right? If you look at it, there are many, many chains, and they have rightly popped up because they're solving different problems. So from a technology side, they're they're amazing and they're powerful and they're solving different things. From a user side, they just add so much complication. I, I know even like seasoned uh, DC D5 veterans keep getting stumped by these chains. You know, uh, you know, how do I access this chain versus that, that chain? My asset is stuck in this chain versus that chain. So it's it's creating a usability problem while it is technically very good. So multi-chain, cross-chain is, is a big problem. Uh, the other, I think, really big one is uh, uh, honestly seed traces. So whenever you want to create your own decentralized finance wallet, you need to have a seed phrase. So um, everybody needs to understand what the seed phrase is. You need to store it somewhere. You cannot lose it. It's a single point of failure. If you lose it, you ac lose access to all your money. So just, just creating, understanding, managing that seed phrase is a large problem. Um, another problem is, uh, I think, just discovery and risk, right? Figuring out what to transact with, what is risky, what is not risky, what is a, uh, you know, a hack or a scam or a rug pull scheme. It's very difficult to understand some of that for the for the normal person. Uh, and and you know, uh, all of this is becomes even more complex when uh, we see that the ecosystem is coming up in burst to spur. So this wallet works with one chain or one protocol this wallet works with another one so you need to have sometimes even multiple wallets to do multiple things so all of these are like large problems that the ecosystem is facing so imagine like uh you know this is how we like to visualize a solution imagine a wallet which which uh, actually is just a simple mobile application which you can download you, you can set it up almost in like one or two clicks without having to go through complexity of understanding the key phrases once you install it, you immediately have access to all the use cases. And I'm, I'm, I'm not talking DApps, I'm saying use cases, which is earning interest, making a loan, taking a, uh, a you know, buying a, a token across thousands of tokens. You can do all of that without having to honestly worry about which chain, which protocol and all of that stuff. And uh, all of this in the most secure uh, way so that while you're getting all of this ease, you don't have to worry about security. So that is the solution that we want to build for you. And you know that's really what we're calling Octo. So what, what we say about Octo is it's the power of self-custody in your uh, pocket, uh, complete access to DeFi uh, it, it, uh, with, in a very simple use, uh, user interface is really what we, we want to do. And while DeFi is a starting point, we want to get to the pla uh, a place where we want to give you access to the best of Web3 just from this single app. And that's the journey we want to take. So let me just double click into Octo uh, now. You know, that's our product, uh, uh, which we will be launching very soon. Um, and just talking about a few of the things that we are solving with Octo. So let's start with self-custody, because I think anyway, that's the theme of the moment. Everybody is really uh, talking about self-custody. Self-custody, as, as a lot of you would know, is basically the assets are in your control. They're not sitting in a pooled custody where a lot of other people's are assets and they're very segregated uh, in your own uh, address or wallet and you have full control of it. So that's self-custody is literally the cornerstone on which we built the, the whole Octo app. Um, and the, then the second part of it is the self-custody is secured by NPC technology, uh, which hides the key uh, the keys part from you makes it a, almost a keyless experience while at the same time uh, giving you complete security so uh, uh if you try just try to summarize mpc in a couple of uh, words right what we do is there's not one single key that is accessing uh that's used to access the wallet they're actually uh, you know different uh, uh kind of parts of the key that are stored in different areas they don't never come into one place they don't talk to each other and all of them have to actually be there to sign the uh, the transaction for it to go through so there's no one single point of failure uh, so that's self custody powered by mpc and then once you have this base what we want to add to it is you know bring the best of uh, defi to you we want to bring you all the swaps or all the tokens that you want to trade all the earning opportunities uh, you know, across farms, liquidity pools, everything uh, in a very seamless manner where you don't have to worry about uh, integration with chains, asset movement across chains, all of that stuff. We will abstract and take care of all of that for you. And and the, the last uh, really part is, you know, assisting you through all of this, assisting you in 
you know, uh, understanding the risk, assisting you in uh, discovery, saying, hey, this is what you should be doing. This is what where you could actually maximize the, the assets that you have earn most from it and, and really even assisting you if you, you know, lose your access to your app, how can we help recover you? Unlike uh, in the uh, previous form of self-custody, if you lose a key, you lose everything. With Octo, we can actually uh, help recover uh, back for you also. So that's uh, a kind of the cornerstone of all of the things that we're, we're building in Octo. But having said that, you know, none of this is easy. All of these sound very easy on uh, when I say it in English, but you know, in reality, there's a lot of complex things that have to be solved. And, and really, we are looking uh, at help from all of you to solve, you know, small, small parts of these problems, uh, simplify things so that you can make it much more easy, much more usable uh, for the users. And, and that's really what this hackathon will be about. Hi, everyone. My name is Vivek. I work engineering at Octo. As Gaurav mentioned in his uh, chat, we are trying to make uh, DeFi more accessible bring it to retail users as we attempt to bring it to retail users it presents a number of challenges primarily centered around making the whole experience simpler and easier for the users some of the problem statements that we are currently addressing include uh, making the transactions atomic now what do i mean it means that uh, a user might want to execute more than one transaction or we might need to require to execute more than one transaction on the blockchain but for an end user, it simply means a single transaction. As an example, approve the funds, swap it for a token, and use that token for adding liquidity to a liquidity pool. Now to a blockchain, this looks like three different transactions. But from an end user point of view, this is like a singular transaction. Is there a way for us to be able to bundle these transactions and execute it as a single atomic unit on blockchain? So that's our uh, first problem statement, where we are asking you to design a contract that takes a bundle of transactions and executes that transaction as a single unit, either everything succeeds or everything fails as an atomic unit on chain. Uh, now my example could also be extended to include say yield farming, right? So I approve funds, I swap funds, I add it to liquidity pool. Once and after I have received the liquidity token, I use that liquidity token to add it to a pool or a farm. This is what we are expecting you to do as part of our first problem statement. The second problem statement revolves around being able to execute transactions without having gas token or native token in most instances. Uh, typically, retail users do not understand that they require to pay the gas fee in, in native tokens or in gas tokens. Even if they did, it creates challenges of a different nature. What if I did not have a gas token? The most obvious route for me is to swap one of my existing tokens to receive gas tokens. But this swap transaction also requires the user to have gas fee tokens. So the second problem statement that we are trying to solve is around being able to execute a transaction when the user does not have the gas token or does not have the native token to be able to pay the gas fee. How do you solve this? You basically use the tokens other tokens, other stable tokens like USDT, USDC, DAI, and other such tokens that might exist in user's wallet and use those tokens to be able to pay the gas fee and then execute the transactions. The third problem statement is around Web3 recovery. Um, we are looking for you to build a mechanism using which users are able to store any of their secret information. It could be any data in a decentralized fashion on blockchain and then be able to retrieve it in a permissioned zero knowledge fashion. Now, once this technology has been built, it can have multitudes of use cases. For instance, it could also be used for backing up uh, a user's private key or creating mechanisms around nominations for people to be able to nominate nominees uh, to be able to, uh, you know, to recover that private key for executing transactions. Uh, but for us, for, for, for this hackathon, we are looking for you to simply focus on building this technology where user is able to store any information, any data in a decentralized fashion on a blockchain and then be able to retrieve it in a permission zero knowledge fashion. Continuing from what I was just saying, um, the fourth problem statement that we are uh, trying to address is around wallet nominations. Uh, now for a retail users, uh, many times, in fact, for any user in the world, many times your assets might actually outlive uh, the user. Um, there is no simple way in blockchain 
for people to be able to nominate their assets to somebody else because it is all about holding the private key. Whoever holds the private key is the one who holds the assets. So in this world, while it creates uh, power for the user, it is, it is central to how decentralization works. It is also important for us to build mechanisms wherein people are able to create nominees, where nominees are able to unlock their funds in case where users are incapacitated. So that's the fourth problem statement we are looking for you to address. Build a mechanism where people are able to nominate and then be able to unlock funds in case of incapacitation. Lastly, token naming service. Um, now, all of us know there is no central database for uh, maintaining a registry of token names or token icons. This results in multitude of problems, including for aggregators like Octo to be able to determine which is the genuine token to use. But more importantly, for a retail users who tend to get uh, spammed, it is very, very easy for anybody to create a token by any name. I mean, I could launch a token today by the name BNB. I could launch a token by the name ETH. How would a user be able to say a spam token from a genuine token? We are asking you as part of our last problem statement to build out a token naming service using which you will be able to, uh, using which uh, people will be able to register their token name or their token logo. And this needs to be a fully decentralized mechanism uh, where there are validators, validators who are able to approve these transactions and no central body, no centralized body uh, be involved in maintaining this registry. That's our final problem statement. If there are any other problem statements you would like to work on, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to our on-ground team to discuss the problem statement before you start executing it. Uh, and for any assistance with the problem statements that we have listed, of course, please do reach out to us. We have an on-ground team there. Uh, happy to work with you in order to help you solve the problems. Uh, like said, uh, we are uh, working on bringing DeFi ecosystem to retail users, making it more accessible. Uh, we are actively working on solving a lot of these problems. Uh, I am very confident that a lot of you will come up with very innovative solutions to the sort of problems we are dealing with. I've, uh, we are really looking forward to some of these solutions coming out. And all the best. Let's start cracking. Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions.